so far we've only been talking about I made reference to this but so far we don't we've only been talking about uh, atoms and we've said that the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons which is entirely true but now atoms form ions and ions um, the reason they're formed is because uh, nature likes to be stable and I'm going to show you a little bit about why they're formed but first of all I'm going to say how they're formed they're formed when an atom either gives up or receives an electron uh, that either gives it up to another atom or it uh, takes one from another atom so how are they formed they either give up or receive uh, one uh, we'll do that we'll say one or more electrons from another atom so electrons can be exchanged and these are typically valence electrons okay valence electrons um, are the ones that are are in the outermost shell and we either give one up to uh, make our outermost shell most stable uh, or we gain one uh, to make our outermost shell stable okay uh, and what I mean by stable I'll talk about that in a second but it's basically having that outermost shell uh, filled. So I have two words here. There's two types of ions that we're going to look at. They're cations and anions. And cations, these are positive ions. And anions are negative ions. Now what makes one positive? Positive ions are formed when um, an atom gives up electrons. Okay, we'll have more positive charges, a greater number of positive charges than we would have negative charges. So of course it's going to have a net positive charge. Negative ions, this is when we have, uh, they are receiving electrons. Okay. Okay, so that means that we have a smaller number of positive charges and we have a larger number of electrons. Okay, so a net charge is going to be negative over here with anions. Over here with cations, we're going to have a net positive charge. And the easy way to remember this is there's a T in the middle of cation, which makes this positive. That's how I always remember. So we're going to take a little bit of a closer look as to how these ions themselves are formed. Now we've already looked at potassium earlier on and again potassium has 19 protons. Okay, It has 19 protons which means that the atom itself has 19 electrons. And that puts when we go with our electron shell of 2, 8, 8, well that gives us 18 and that leaves us one hanging out here one and as I said earlier nature really likes to be balanced and with electron shells nature wants its outermost shell balanced it wants it full so if it's not full the easiest thing to do is to give this up so this last electron will go its outermost shell so now we get rid of this one its outermost shell is now full now it actually feels good but what happens to our net charge we have a total of 19 protons and now we only have once this one leaves we are going to have a total of 18 electrons which gives us a net charge an ionic charge of k positive one and we don't write the the one there we just put just a regular positive sign Okay, so this is called potassium ion. And all um, metals or positive ions, cations, they all use the name, same name, and we write ion behind that. Now, sulfur itself also forms an ion. So here, sulfur has a, um, and this is sulfur 32. 
Okay, so that means that it has an atomic mass number of 32, atomic number of 16. So there are 16 protons. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 electrons. But we can see that the outermost shell does not have, it's not full. We actually could use another two. We could put another one right here and another one here. And nature is going to do what's easiest. Is it going to be easiest for it to give up these six that are in the outer shell? No, it can't do that. That's way too difficult to do. That's going to take a lot of energy. It's probably going to pull the atom apart. Um, so instead, what it's going to do, well, potassium just finished giving up one. So there's electrons floating around. So potassium is going to gain an electron here, and it's also going to gain an electron here. So now we have 16 protons, okay, 16 protons, and we have 18 electrons. So that gives us a net charge of two negative. So we're going to write uh, our is S negative two. Okay, so there's our charge on our ion, S negative two. And now we change the name of this. We drop the UR and we call this sulfide. And we do not write ion. Okay, the IDE tells us that it's an ion. So this is how we form positive ions and negative ions. So again, when an ion is formed, we're looking at having its outermost energy level complete and full. So that's either going to be two electrons or eight electrons. Okay, here again, we had two in the first shell. We had eight in the second shell. We had six in the third shell. Well, instead of dumping those six, we want to bring it up to eight. Two, eight, eight. Okay, so you can see that sulfide and potassium have the same number of electrons uh, in bo of both of them. So here's a practical example of this. If we have, I'm going to change my color here. So if we have uh, sodium and chlorine, well, first of all, the sodium atom, which is here, okay, and chlorine. Okay, this is the atom, and how do I know it's the atom? Because the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Number of protons equals the number of electrons. Well, if I look at the outermost shell of sodium, very similar to our example of potassium, it only has one electron in its outermost shell. Best thing to do is to get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to dump that and get rid of that. I'm going to form. I'm going to form sodium ion. Okay, which is Na positive because I have 10 electrons now and I have 11 protons. Chlorine is going to form chloride ion. And what it has over here, we have in its outermost shell in the atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in its outermost shell. The easiest thing to do is to go on and gain one electron. So it's going to go and pick one up. So now we see it has three, four, five, six, seven, eight in its outermost shell. That gives it now 18 electrons. Still has 17 protons, exactly the same. So now it has a net charge of negative one. This is how ions are formed. So the reason why these guys get together, then they form table salt, which is sodium chloride because we have a net charge of positive one, and we have a net charge over here of negative one, giving this compound, we're gonna get into compounds a little bit later on, and maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, this has a net charge of zero. So that's how this works out so well. Okay, and that's how we get our table salt. Sodium wants to give up an electron, and chloride wants to gain an electron. And that's how they go together. So that's how ions work. So in summary, uh, compounds, we'll get to those a little bit later on. I'm probably jumping a bit ahead of myself. How are they formed? Uh, there's a number of different 
things that we can look at and I'm just going to just touch on these. There's ionic bonding and there is uh, covalent bonding. Uh, covalent bonding. And compounds are formed when two elements uh, get together uh, to share electrons to become more stable. Uh, valence electrons, again just to review, these are the outermost electrons. Okay, these are the electrons in the outermost shell. Uh, and then again, this has to do with um, compounds that electrons can either be shared or they can be transferred. Uh, this is molecular and this is ionic. And we'll touch on this in our next video. Here's the last important rule that you need to know is the octet rule. And this is what we were talking about that the outermost, well, first of all, that uh, our energy levels are 2, 8, 8, 8. Uh, the first one, you know, it's not an octet, okay? It doesn't have anything to do with oct, but that one fills first. And then we will always want to have our other energy levels uh, full with a maximum of 8. And they want them to be complete. That's what the octet rule is all about. So there was a lot in this video. Uh, hopefully, you know, feel comfortable to uh, you feel comfortable to go back, rewind, uh, take notes again. It follow along in your textbook. Uh, have your own notes, and we're going to go over things in class. See you next time.